high seventh and eighth grade, it's Father Tom. So I was hoping to come by your classes uh, to talk a little bit more about the Stations of the Cross. But obviously, I can't do that right now. So instead, I've made this little uh, video for you, um, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I've taken some images of churches around the world and different uh, ways that different artists have depicted the Stations of the Cross, and I wanted to share these with you. So maybe when this is all over, I'll have a chance to come by your classrooms and talk a little bit more, answer any questions you have. But for now, please know that you and your families and loved ones are in my heart and in my prayers each and every day. May God bless you, God bless those you love, and keep you safe and peaceful and happy. Bye-bye. The subject matter of the Stations of the Cross is always the same. Fourteen moments on the journey that Jesus makes to his crucifixion on Good Friday. The artists who make these stations use various materials, paint, wood, glass, metal. But the subject matter is always the same. The journey of Jesus on Good Friday in Jerusalem. The Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrow. This is what the streets of Jerusalem look like today. For centuries, pilgrims from around the world come to Jerusalem to follow these streets, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, to follow where he went. We can't always do that, so that's why we have the Stations of the Cross. We bring that journey home into our own church, into the place where we pray and get to know Jesus better. Now, usually stations are found inside the church, but here's a church where using stained glass outside comes in. And here's a church where the stations are outside. Sometimes the stations are put along pathways and gardens where you follow Jesus one step after the other. Here are little houses. Now here's a special one for me. This is a church in the Midwest, or what used to be a church. The church that was here was destroyed in a tornado. The parishioners built a new church right nearby, but what they did is they went into the rubble of their old church and they found the Stations of the Cross. And they put them, reinstalled them where they would have been, where they were once before, in this open field where the church once was. It teaches us a lesson at the end of the stations is the victory of life. This little chapel designed by the artist Matisse is a little different. He puts the stations of the cross all on one wall. They're made of ceramic tile and very simple design. But here we do the stations not with our feet, but with our eyes. The same thing is true in the chapel at Jesuit High School, where if you look way in the, in the back corner there, you can see the stations of the cross all on one wall. Now, I want to look at some artists' work in uh, their depiction of uh, how they saw and they see the stations. This is a very colorful and beautiful, simple Stations of the Cross. Another simple design, this one in black and white. Here the artist puts Jesus in modern times, with Simon carrying the cross with Jesus, Veronica wiping the face of Jesus, and Jesus meeting the sad women of Jerusalem. Notice the Roman soldiers dressed in coat and tie. Here a photographer connects the suffering of the poor with the suffering of Jesus. This artist, the 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross, as do those who suffer from addiction to drugs and those who have loved ones who suffer from serious illness. This artist, 
has Jesus himself in modern clothes being uh, indicted before the court, carrying his cross, and finally being buried as his mother says goodbye. Here, an artist connects Jesus carrying his cross with the suffering of those in the Holocaust. Here are 14 stamps of the 14 stations. 15 paintings. There's a 15th station, which I'll talk about later. It's all about love. It's all about love. Even little ones, even kids, can learn about the stations. There's life inside, life hidden beyond what we can't see. Now here's an artist I wanted to share with you, Barnett Newman. He makes these very, very simple paintings with these straight lines, vertical lines. And here he is in his studio. Uh, he was Jewish by birth, an agnostic. He didn't believe in God. He made these paintings, Lema Sabachthani, he called them, which was what Jesus said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even though he didn't believe in God, Barnett Newman had a massive heart attack. He survived, but as he grappled with uh, almost facing death, he thought about another Jewish man who faced death, Jesus. So we saw this one before, but there's the 15th station, and here the 15th station in gold, and that's the resurrection. That's the end of the story. So it's been nice to share this with you. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.